I'm Mark Chalero, the owner of MS Classic Cars. This is my buddy, Rambler Man, and I figured he would be perfect to share this moment with me presenting an absolutely spectacular 1942 Ford pickup truck that's been fully customized and nicknamed the Art Rod. To start off this uh, presentation here, um, the first thing I want to say is this is a non-rehearsed video. Please bear with me as I go over this entire vehicle. I am going to reference notes that I've made. If you have or have not been following MS Classic Cars, we only collect number one and number two condition vehicles. We deal strictly with quality. We're very proud to say we're the only classic car dealership in the country who methodically services every vehicle that we sell. We document that work with an invoice that is included with every vehicle. We do it with everything we sell. Matter of fact, in the background over there is a 58 uh, Fairlane Junior. Even the Junior that we recently sold was completely serviced. We also detail these vehicles to the highest level. I create a binder brand new with plastic sleeves. I include all the information for every vehicle. Uh, so the new owner has nothing to worry about. As indicated, uh, this is the invoice here that documents we invested a total of $8,016.25 in this vehicle that you see here today. You can see this invoice in more detail on our website at msclassiccars.com with a uh, full description again of everything we did with parts and labor. Uh, you can see it in our photo gallery, so make sure to do that. Um, so to start off this presentation here, uh, what I wanted to do is first just briefly touch base on some of these awards that are here. Um, the first thing, and I'm going to reference my notes again as I mentioned earlier uh, that I'm going to go through here, is to start kind of fast forward, then I'm going to bring you back a little bit. So this particular vehicle here, um, has been awarded in 2008, which is the black plaque on the bottom, best in show at Hot Rod Magazine Show, which is actually a really big show. There was a ton of cars. It was the 70th anniversary. Uh, to win best of show there is a pretty big deal. In 2019, which is even a bigger deal, it was awarded first place at the Grand National Roadster Show, which is held in California. Anybody who knows anything about cars, especially classic cars, knows the Grand National Roadster Show is really where the top cars in the country go. And for this vehicle to have been awarded uh, first place, it speaks volume for the quality of the vehicle. In 2020, um, it actually was featured in this catalog here, this calendar rather. Uh, this is the classic Street Rods 2020 calendar. There's a full right up there with photos and everything with the vehicle and so forth. Of course, that show board also comes with it. So now what I will do is lead into my presentation. 
The first thing I want to say is uh, getting back to MS Classic Cars collecting number one and number two condition vehicles. I have been a huge fan of rat rods, if you will. Rat rods are essentially vehicles that people uh, hand build. Uh, they com compose of many different things. Uh, they start with cabs or they start with f different front ends and different motors and different parts of different cars. And what they do is they kind of make a car that truly never really existed. Similar to my friend Rambler Man over here as well. This is in a perfect example, and that's why I brought him out in this presentation here. He did not exist, and he was basically uh, fabricated out of tons of different parts that you would find on boats and outboard motors and uh, ashtrays that were used for hats and things like this. Uh, so I kind of brought this out here because it reminds me a lot of what a rat rod actually is. The problem with most rat rods for me is they're not at the level of quality uh, that I collect at MS Classic Cars. So when I saw this vehicle for sale, uh, my jaw hit the floor because the craftsmanship, the, the innovation, uh, what was actually done to this is actually mind boggling. Um, if you think about a restoration, it's hard enough when you can order parts off the internet, whether they're factory OEM parts or they're uh, custom parts or reproduction parts, uh, and restore vehicles the way that the factory did or build pro touring cars or resto mod cars and so forth, which we collect. But when you're actually doing a rat rod, uh, a homemade build like this, nothing is actually told how to do it, how to design it. Uh, you cannot just go on the internet and find parts for it. So the amount of time that it takes to fabricate every single part, put it all together and make it all work is mind boggling. I would say that the amount of time is probably double than a normal restoration would be. So with that being said, uh, this is truly a one of a kind. Uh, you could only imagine the money that went into this build. It would seriously cost somebody $100,000, $200,000 to build something like this if you started from scratch and could afford to pay a shop to put it all together, make it all work, and make it of this quality. So again, very proud of this. Now let's get into the story. The story goes, uh, and I wanna make sure I reference my notes here so I don't mess this up. It was first built in 2006 by a gentleman named Kurt Brown in Michigan. He is the one who truly deserves a lot of the credit because he's the one who did the first build. This is a vehicle that's been built twice. So when he finished it, an article was done on Rod in Custom Magazine, which is actually here. This is the original magazine, and you will notice up in the corner, home built, low down pickup is here, and that is this particular truck that you're looking at. Obviously, it looks much different today because it was redone, but inside this magazine is a huge spread which covers four pages. I'll just kind of move this down here like this and show you, and this again is in our photo gallery so you can see this, but this entire spread is basically on this truck, and again, it was Rod and Custom feature car, and it goes into all the details. One of the comments that I wrote here on my notes, which I'm gonna read to you in a second, that I truly appreciated that the magazine said about this particular car was, um, let's see here, as quoted, the finished truck brings the element of rough and raw, but has the finesse of a World War II aircraft with its many avi aviation-inspired details. You are going to see uh, so many cool things as I present uh, everything to you here today. Again, it's truly mind-boggling what went into this build. So uh, let's get into fast-forwarding. Um, the truck eventually found itself in the hands of classic car enthusiast Brett Blackburn, he's a super nice guy, uh, like myself, he's a huge classic car guy, uh, loves vehicles like this, and he's the one who found the truck in its original state, as I just showed you in the magazine. He realized the amount of work that went into this truck and wanted to take the truck to the highest level 
and make it one of the best in the world. And that's clearly what he did, which is documented with these awards, especially the one from the Grand National Roadster Show, which was done in 2019. So this is a fresh build. It has literally no miles on it since it's been restored. He drove it a little bit. Uh, of course, we serviced it, we drove it. We are gonna be doing a driving video, so make sure to stay posted for that. You can check it out on our YouTube account. We're probably gonna do that later today, uh, if not tomorrow, while the weather's still nice. Uh, but again, today's presentation is to go over the history, uh, go over the, uh, the whole thing in, in full detail here so you clearly understand what it is. Now, fast forwarding to um, what this uh, really is all about here. Uh, so I'm going to start off by telling you that the cab of the truck is a 1942. Uh, it was chopped six inches at the front with an inch less in the rear and then channeled six inches. So if you look at the actual cab, the cab is absolutely spectacular. The bodywork is amazing. It's laser straight. Uh, the roof is beautiful. Uh, you can see this whole cowl area here is absolutely spectacular. He left some of the factory welds in here just to give it that little bit of nostalgic look, but it's beautiful. This vent opens from the inside. It works perfectly. Uh, so again, I cannot say enough about the actual cab itself. You can see the factory lines that were in here and how beautifully all this was done. You can see the back area here. It's just absolutely spectacular. The doors, uh, again, open and close. I don't know if you noticed how easily I opened and closed this door here. It's magnificent. And these are factory style chrome door handles that are obviously brands making new. Now, uh, getting into the um, lower cowl sections were modified. So we're referring to this cowl area here. So he did some custom work there. Um, and then to put the icing on the cake, they added a firewall from a 1937 Ford, which is slightly different than the 42, uh, to make what you see here today. Uh, beautiful job with that. It also sports a 1949 International Grill. And if you look at how this grill, which again did not belong on a Ford, but this is what rat rods are all about, custom designing, fabrication, look at how beautifully this grill, you gotta pay attention to the details here, how beautiful this grill lines up with that cowl. Almost like it would be one piece if the engine wasn't exposed. Absolutely magnificent job. Um, getting into what was actually painted, um, the color of this paint is called golden bronze metallic. The paint is absolutely impeccable, show quality. It's been detailed to the highest level. Uh, this is a magnificent color. I think they nailed it with the color choice. Uh, I, I would say that it would be the best color you could have possibly painted this. They obviously painted the entire cab in the color. Uh, they painted these custom air cleaners here, which I'll get into in a minute, to match uh, the exterior. The international grill, these custom-made headlights here, these custom-made side scoops, which is what I'll refer to them as, and of course, the bed of the vehicle, which is an open bed. They left it open so you could see everything in the back, which I'll get into in a minute. We have this fuel tank back here, which was actually painted body color as well. So they did an unbelievable job. They also painted the entire interior body color so it just flows into the inside of the cabin. Uh, so now, making our way to my second page of notes here. Um, so obviously, we're gonna go over some of the uh, custom features of the truck. Um, it is just amazing when you actually look at it. I will make a comment here before I forget that there are a total of 621 lightning holes throughout this entire truck. When I say lightning holes in my presentation, or if you visit our website and you see it in the description, we're referring to these circle style holes that are found throughout the entire vehicle. It's amazing when you actually see how many of them there are. So this would be an example. There would be some here as an example. In the exhaust uh, tips there, which actually off of a Harley Davidson as an example, 
Uh, it just is evident throughout the entire build, especially when I open up the interior, you look in the back, you will notice all of those. Um, so getting into uh, some of the exterior features here uh, that they've done, uh, you'll notice this sun visor. This sun visor was actually shortened. Uh, it was narrowed. And then of course they, they painted it, a uh, material here that matches the color of the outside of the vehicle. And then of course they put this brushed uh, aluminum trim here, which really put the icing on the cake. They capped it off here on the ends. You'll notice this custom piece they added to the piece just to keep it stable on the road. Of course, all the glass was custom made. All the glass is tinted. Uh, it's brand new glass, uh, both on the front, on the back, and on the sides. A lot of the times uh, you get into these vehicles and they don't have glass, um, but this vehicle has glass all the way around. Matter of fact, what I'll do here quickly, and I'll just put this down, is show you. This actually rolls up and it rolls up nice and tight. And you can see it's crystal clear. Again, beautiful, beautiful job with everything that you see in this vehicle. Again, the doors open and close beautifully as well. Um, talking about some more items here, we got this chrome mirror, brand new chrome mirror that's on the driver's side only. Thought that was a great touch. Uh, we get into, again, uh, the functioning vent here as well. Um, the firewall was actually painted a darker shade of white. Uh, I thought that was the perfect way to highlight the actual engine compartment. So it kind of broke up the color of the entire vehicle. Um, obviously, uh, this front grill here that we talked about earlier is brand spanking new. And you will notice all of these custom pinstripes here. I do have to reference quickly uh, the company who actually did the pinstriping, I wanna make sure that I give them a shout out. It was done by Mike Donner and Von Hot Rod out of California. Um, the one thing I didn't touch base on uh, also is who Brett Blackburn uh, coordinated this restoration with and who actually did the restoration. Uh, it was done by Platinum Black Rod and Customs out of Huntington Beach, California. Uh, their name is on the show board. Uh, you know, they're actually responsible for all this beautiful craftsmanship that you see here today. Uh, I believe it's a, a owned by a, a group of brothers. The last name is Jones because he referenced them on this show board here. So again, I want to make sure that I give them credit where credit is due. You will see here a special thanks to Chris Jones of Platinum Black for all his unique special talents and devotion to the detail. And then you'll see fabrication by him. Uh, you'll see Brett Blackburn's name, then of course, Jason Jones, uh, and then they go into the polishing by Steve Jones. So I'm assuming that they're all probably family. Uh, and again, I wanna make sure we give them a shout out for the great job that they did building this vehicle. So when we get into some of the detail work here, uh, these headlight buckets, again, are spectacular. They're Wagner headlights. You'll notice the fabrication of all of these parts that had to be done. I mean, the, the more you look at this, every single nut and bolt has been completely fabricated, handmade. They did an outstanding job with everything. Truly amazing work here. You seriously can get lost for days. And that's why they nicknamed it Art Rod because it's truly like looking at a piece of artwork. That's what it is. To think that this actually runs and drives as good as it does is amazing, especially for, again, a rat rod. Um, so getting into a few other things here uh, on the exterior that I would like to mention is the slight color that you'll change that you'll see. It's actually uh, on the wheels. If you look at the wheels here, you'll notice that the outer part of the wheel is painted this unique color green. It's actually from Jeep, the manufacturer Jeep. It's called Rescue Green Metallic. And what they did, again, to break up the monotony and to kind of have some contrasting colors, they went with the green on the wheel they went with the green on the engine block, and they also went with the green cap here on the master cylinder. They also painted the drive shaft that color, and they also painted the shocks uh, that color as well. So they just gave it a little bit of an extra color in here to kind of break it up, and I think they picked the perfect, perfect colors uh, for everything. The rest of everything that you see, all the suspension pieces, um, the inner parts of the wheels, some of the back section, which I'll go over in a minute, um, was actually called Vegas Gold Metallic. So that's what they call it. These wheels here uh, that are in the front, 
We replaced the tires at MS Classic Cars. Um, those tires are brand new again. They're Firestone Deluxe Champions that are 4.516 in the front and they're 7.0016 in the rear. Um, you can even see the attention to detail on just the wheels themselves, the amount of work that went into that. Even the lug nuts are, are bullet uh, chrome and so forth. They look absolutely spectacular. Um, so talking a little bit more uh, about the engine compartment. And then what I'll do is I'll make my way to the back and then eventually I'm gonna get into the interior, go over the interior and then I'll start it and I'll let you listen to how beautiful it runs. So getting back to the actual engine itself, um, it's powered by a Ford. It's a 239 inch. These are a very, very popular motor. It's an 8BA. It's a flathead, of course. Uh, you could only put a flathead in something like this to keep it real. And this actually was rebuilt during the first build, uh, which was done by Todd Courier at the Hot Rod and Custom Supply in Michigan. Um, again, the block was painted in Jeep Rescue Green Metallic, and it matches the wheels. Again, the brake cylinder, the drive shaft, the shafts, etc. And again, you will see all the custom pinstriping that I mentioned earlier. They've got pinstriping on the block here. They've got it on the grill. Uh, you'll find it on the oil pan. Uh, it's on the interior. It's on. You know, it's really cool how they just added that little touch of pinstriping, which was very popular back in the day for these vehicles. Again, a lot of thought went into this deal here. The engine is dressed with Edelbrock heads. Uh, these are famous, famous, famous heads. This is where it all started for Edelbrock. You'll notice all these uh, nuts here are all chrome and detailed, all the clear spark plug wires. We replaced all the spark plugs in MS Classic cars. You'll notice how beautifully these hoses and everything flow into the radiator system. This is actually a power master, what's called a power gen. Looks like a generator, but it's actually an alternator uh, for charging and so forth. Um, this is actually a Fenton intake, which is on there. The Fenton intake is actually uh, a really, really awesome intake. It's got gear work risers with four Ford 94 carburetors. Two of the carburetors are strictly for looks. As people know, it's almost near impossible to run a flathead on multiple carburetors like this. So even two uh, carburetors is, uh, is no easy task, but we've dialed these things in, we've rebuilt them. I'm gonna show you how well this thing runs in a second when I start it, but look at the craftsmanship here. I, I mean, photos and pictures, videos, they, they just tell it like you see it. I mean, look at the work that went into here. It's like opening a jewelry box, every single screw. And when you look at the detail, look at how they made these custom air cleaners here. Not only do they make them here, but they match on the side. They're covered with all this type of material, which matches the radiator cap, which matches the bolts. It just kind of flows perfectly. Uh, from what they told me, uh, what Brett Blackburn had said is Chip Foos, I guess, is very close to Platinum Black in California. And I guess Chip Foos had the opportunity to see this. And even he commented on how spectacular uh, this vehicle was, which was awesome. Um, the thing I will say also about the engine is it has a Mallory Unilite distributor and coil. Um, again, the engine runs perfectly. Uh, it's cooled by this radiator here with the oversized electric fan. Again, I'm gonna go ahead and just show you something really quick here. The fan actually turns on electronically from inside to keep it nice and cool. This is the kind of stuff that you just can't make up uh, on the vehicle. It's in full working order. I'm also gonna show you when you're on the outside there, the lights. You can see how the lights turn on on both sides here. Um, there's also lights that are built into the back of the bed, which I'll show you in a minute as well. But everything is controlled from the inside here and everything is extremely functional. Getting into uh, the engine. The engine is coupled again to a Chevrolet uh, C10 T5, so it's a five-speed manual transmission, great transmission, especially paired uh, to this particular engine here. And we actually added a brand new Speedway 10 and a half inch clutch. So it's got a really user-friendly clutch. It's brand new. At MS Classic Cars, we actually pulled the motor out of the vehicle to do the clutch, do the transmission. We went through everything and put it all back in methodically. We kind of cleaned up a few things, touched up the things, made sure everything was working properly. Uh, so that's been done. The, the power's transferred uh, through the custom drive shaft 
into the Franklin quick change rear end with floating axles. So if you wanna make your way over here, uh, again, the attention to detail on this is absolutely spectacular. Look at, look at down below those little ribs and the detail with all the bolts. Every single bolt is stainless, everything is polished. When you make your way back here, uh, I mean, this just gets even better. L look at this. The, you'll notice those holes. Again, those are the lightning holes that they were referring to earlier. You'll notice them that they're on the gas cap. That's the actual fuel tank. You'll notice that they're actually here on these pieces. Everything that you see here had to be handmade, had to be fabricated and figured out. It is absolutely spectacular. The air uh, compressor tank is there. Those two compartments that are on the bottom, they actually open up easily. Everything is very neat and very detailed. That's where the battery is. It's actually a red uh, Odyssey Extreme brand new battery that we put in there. And then on the other side, that's actually where the control panel is and everything for the air ride. But look at how amazing everything is back here and so forth. Um, so in wrapping up uh, the back here in the exterior of the vehicle, um, there's a really detailed description on our website at MS Classic Cars of exactly how the suspension system works. The innovation and the way they did it all is truly mind boggling, but you definitely have to read it, understand how it works. When the vehicle raises and when it lowers, because we have it right now in relatively uh, normal drive height, but this thing slams to the floor. When it actually slams to the floor, this tank here has been set up on the suspension where the tank actually moves, rests against the back of the body of the vehicle when it's completely low. And then when you raise it up, it actually moves back and it pivots. So again, the fabrication that went into uh, this vehicle is absolutely spectacular. You'll see so many different pieces of uh, custom parts and innovation. The undercarriage, again, you will see that on our website. It's highly detailed underneath. Uh, we did a little bit of cleaning under there, but it's spectacular. Definitely something you can put mirrors underneath at a car show and so forth. But what I would like to do now uh, is put away my notes here, and then I'm gonna get inside the vehicle, and I'm going to show you some of the instrumentation and some of the features inside, and then I'm gonna go ahead and start it and let you listen to how beautiful it runs. So let's wake our way inside. Now I am six foot, uh, 200 pounds. A lot of times these vehicles can be extremely tight. I want to emphasize that I fit inside of here quite comfortably considering the size of the vehicle. So I'll show you how nicely I fit. I get in like so, put this binder here, bring my leg around and you can clearly see that I have plenty of headroom. I've got plenty of arm room. My knees are not completely against the steering wheel. You gotta keep in mind, this is a rat rod. <laughs> you have to keep in mind, this is the, the part of it that's exciting. It's you know being inside such a small, confined area, but even being somebody who's taller, I fit in it absolutely perfectly. Um, can't say enough about it. So let's quickly go over some of the interior. Um, you'll first notice that this whole interior here has been painted body color. They did a beautiful job. It does have custom pinstriping, like on the dash here. It's got some on the front fascia of the dash. Um, there's some pinstriping on the center console. It just flows throughout the entire vehicle. Uh, the headliner here, it's kind of like a simulated leather material. It might actually be rear leather, um, but they did a beautiful job with that. It carries on the actual side and it also carries on the back and it goes all the way down. They used all stainless bolts here. They did a beautiful job. Even adding these little brackets here with the lightning holes that I mentioned earlier was really innovative. There's a bar that wraps around the back. Uh, you can see a lot of this. Again, uh, if it's not clear in this video, you can see it on our website at msclassiccars.com. But the dash is spectacular. This actually is out of a 1960 Chevrolet. I mean, look at how they did it. Not only did they fabricate all that into the dash, but they capped off these beautiful uh, Stuart Warner gauges that are black, very nostalgic, with these chrome eyebrows, if you will, that look amazing. Um, you'll notice over on this side here, we got a control panel. Uh, that's the panel that you use to operate some of the features, which I'll go over in a second when I start it. Um, this steering wheel here, this is a three-spoke custom steering wheel. The whole entire steering system is all customized. Inside this glove box, 
There's actually the controls for the actual air ride. So you can go up and down in here. See how nicely this thing shuts and closes. Again, the craftsmanship is impeccable. Uh, the center console was also covered in the same type of leather material as the headliner and the door panels. They covered it with, again, all these beautiful uh, pieces of trim. The shifter boot is leather. Even the shifter knob itself kind of matches the exterior. I thought that was really cool. This is a great uh, shifter here because you can grip it and, uh, and bang through the gears and everything else. The doors were capped with this nice trim. Uh, supposedly these door panels, uh, from what I read, were from a Corvette, some of this trim here. Uh, not exactly what part of it, but I know some of it was from a Corvette, uh, the pattern maybe. Um, these door uh, handles uh, and so forth, the window cranks, everything has the holes that follows the whole theme of the build. You'll see all the stainless bolts here on the sills. The door, um, again, opens and closes beautifully. The floors have aluminum trim with, again, more holes throughout the process that kind of acts as your floor. They even fabricated vents in the floors that are toward the front fascia here. Can't really see them quite well in the video, but you definitely can see them in our pictures. They put little screens over them. Those vents keep airflow flowing and so forth. They did a beautiful job with that. Even the pedals that are in here are absolutely spectacular. The pedals, I love the actual uh, gas pedal. It says speed pedal on it, which is cool. And last but not least, these seats, these were actually inspired by aircraft. Uh, these are amazing seats. They actually recline. You can actually adjust the back of the seat. And underneath the seat is actually a storage compartment as well. That was actually done by the gentleman who actually first built the vehicle. So what was really cool is they kept a lot of the things that he had already done when he built it. And when they redid it, they pretty much just made everything that he did better. And then, of course, they added some things. But most of what you see was, was old stuff that was done that they basically turned into new stuff that you see here today. So again, that pretty much covers the interior. Again, I mentioned this console here. I just want to make sure there's nothing I meant. Oh, one thing I did forget to mention. Under the dashboard, when the power is connected, because we do have a power cutoff knob on this vehicle when it's being stored, when, you're, when you want to use it, you can actually just turn the power on. It's connected right to the battery with a little key that we installed in service. There's a light under here. You might see it in our photos or see it here. I don't know if you can see the reflection in my hand, that purple light, but that's actually for a cell phone charger. So a little bit of innovation, uh, modern technology mixed in with this nostalgic uh, art rod just makes it truly spectacular. So last thing here I'm going to go over is the starting process. I'm going to start it as you watch. Uh, the first thing we're going to do here is you want to turn on the ignition. This is the ignition switch, which turns essentially the power on from the front. Uh, again, the power is on in the back. Uh, this right here is the fuel pump. Again, the up position, you can hear the fuel pump come on. It's very light. Um, this right here is the fan that I mentioned earlier. You can hear the fan come on. I'll turn that fan off for now just because I want you to hear what I'm saying. And this switch right here, this is actually for the lights. It operates all the lights. And again, make sure to reference our photos. The one thing I forgot to mention about the lights is there are custom lights that are built into the bed for the brakes, um, which actually illuminate on the top and under the normal parking uh, lights as well. So you gotta make sure to check that out. And there's also a license plate light that is so cool that actually aims toward the license plate. And you'll notice that we left the 1949 California black plate on there, just again, uh, for nostalgic purposes, but that light illuminates in white as well when the lights are turned on. So cool. So vehicles in neutral. All I have to do at this point, now that everything is basically turned on, uh, with the exception of the radiator fan, which I'll turn on once it starts, is I got to push this button right here. There's no key and it fires right up. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Before I go ahead and do that, I just want to thank you for watching this video. Again, please make sure to watch our driving video that we're going to do. It's probably going to be later today or tomorrow. Uh, check out our website at msclassiccars.com. If you have not signed up for our VIP email blast, please do that. We have thousands of people that follow us. Uh, we are all over social media, so make sure to like us on there as well. Uh, we have sold over 700 vehicles at MS Classic Cars. We have a great collection. We don't have a ton of inventory, quite honestly, that's available, 
because of the process that we put our vehicles through, when our cars or motorcycles, trucks, whatever it is, comes up for sale, they sell and they sell quick. So don't be fooled by the fact that we don't have anything on our inventory page. It's strictly because we're selling cars like candy bars. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and start this, let you listen how beautiful it runs. Here she goes. You can't make that up. That is a unbelievable job by my service department, getting that motor dialed into perfection. That's with two 94 Ford carburetors. Listen to how that thing purrs and you will hear it sputter. It's a nice little backfire out of those Harley Davidson uh, tipped baffles that are on the exhaust. That was all done intentionally to make this thing appear like it would have back in the day. So um, again, I can shut off the car just by turning it off like that, flip the key back on, check this out. You just can't make it up. It runs absolutely beautiful. We appreciate you watching. Thanks again.